So welcome to the next in our online messages brought to you by the friends at First Church Rowley. This is Reverend Tom Bentley, the pastor, saying that we hope these messages can help you in your journey. We're in Advent. This is the second Sunday of Advent in 2022. And the focus is on peace. Also at our congregation, we will be having a Heritage Sunday service where we look back all the way to the beginning of our existence in 1639. It gives us an opportunity to reflect on today as well as back then. So again, thank you for spending time with us. So grace and peace to you from our friend Jesus. This is the time in the calendar year when the congregation I serve looks back at its history. We call it Heritage Sunday, the second Sunday in Advent. Also in that ceremony, that liturgy for the second Sunday of Advent, we light the second candle in the Advent wreath, the Advent candle of peace. We look back at our history. This church, this congregation was founded in 1639, just a few years after that communal group went to Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620. We call those people the Pilgrims. They came out of a Puritan tradition. And in their early years, they established some fundamental structures for what later became our Republic. And so when we celebrate Heritage Sunday, we're looking back at centuries of centuries of struggle, reflection, sin, confusion, even violence. But we look back to find that, as it is often in life, the seminal moment, the beginning, had a certain purity to it, a certain inspiration, and much of that was spirit-fed. After having survived terrible trials, death, suffering, those people in Plymouth in 1620, before they landed on shore, drew up what's called the Mayflower Compact, and in that elegant little document where everybody effectively agreed who signed the document to work together and cooperate, somewhat independent of the sovereign of the British Empire, the king, and somewhat independent of legalisms. It was an interesting moment where in just a simple little document there was a division between the state and the gathered church and that separation of powers has gone on since then, later to be codified and formalized, but the pilgrims in their visceral understanding of their struggle to survive knew that they had to do it in their own way. They had to make it up as they went along. And that free association became a template, a structure legally for what became a critical part of American codified law. We call these groups voluntary associations, nonprofits often, and they work independent of the oversight of the government. The government really can't go in and mess around with their beliefs and their commitments and their values. If we read Bradford, William Bradford's history of this commune in Plymouth, he was the leader of it for about 50 years, he reflects back on the genuine, sensitive, and authentic relationship among the people, particularly before they found their way to the New World when they were in Leiden in the Netherlands. They had a bond which was an intentional community, fed by a sense of purpose and a grounding in their understanding of Scripture. This forming of voluntary associations to be willful and independent of the oversight of the organized state is an American principle which we carry with us today. And we hope for peace, but often there isn't. Often there is conflict. That's the nature, it turns out, of what a democracy can often be. The Mayflower Compact did not preclude thereafter any conflict. There was much conflict in the original Plymouth community, much conflict in the Greater New England and the settlement in 1630 of Massachusetts Bay Colony where middle class Puritans came in and began to exercise a legal theocracy over everyone 
so this idea that we would freely and voluntarily associate struggled throughout our early history and it's been nip and tuck ever since. We look now back and see this arc of development and we see the kind of struggle that happens and in our search for peace I think of the reading in Isaiah which is assigned to us in the lectionary in the second Sunday of Advent for this 2022 calendar. It's the prophet Isaiah speaking of the peaceable kingdom. Let's see what he says in part. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. This, yes, is a vision of a new world transformed by the grace of God. This shoot from the stump of Jesse has been taken by Christians as a preamble, as a prediction, if you will, of the arrival of the Christ through Jesus of Nazareth. We can understand it that way, and the church today leans on that, especially around the season of Christmas. But can we look more closely at what's promised here? What's promised is a world that doesn't work like the one we're in right now, where even the natural realm is maintained and sustained by a cooperative, connective, peaceful presence. I think of the painter... Edward Hicks, who was a mid-19th century Quaker, and he painted something like 60 times this painting. You can see in the painting the animals assembled, and off in the distance it's William Penn making peace with the Native Americans in Pennsylvania. Hicks painted this painting over and over again as a sacramental message to those people with whom he associated and loved, and often did not sell this painting. He was a decorative artist who painted signs on the side for a living, but this was his message. This was the vision. A hundred years later, we have a painter named Horace Pippins, who, a survivor of the First World War in combat, an African-American, was traumatized by all that and severely wounded. He painted this painting using the motif of the Peaceable Kingdom by Edward Hicks, and you notice that in the background something is different. There are armed people fighting a war. There are tanks. It tells us that peace is hard to come by. It is hard to find the Peaceable Kingdom in our human community. The movement that inspired Pippins and, most directly, Edward Hicks was the New Light Movement which came out of the teaching of Matthew Fox in the late 18th century. It helped people following Jesus to understand there's an inner light, an inner Christ, which if we express and can find in others, we can build community and we can find the grace that can lead us through the hard times. Our purest and Puritan forebearers did not appreciate this teaching, but for this common time, I think it's critical that we re-embrace this spiritual grounding if we're going to have peace at all in any time. That's what Advent is. We're waiting for that kingdom, the kingdom that transcends even the limits of nature. As we look at our journey, can we realize that the voluntary association principle, that inner wisdom that God grants to us through the Spirit, that guides us to build these 
this kingdom of cooperation requires the covenant of promise which the early pilgrims celebrated and bonded to through scripture and we are instructed to do the same today in our own journey. Covenant is an informal often set of promises that guide us in our deepest way of being. We call marriage between two people a covenant rather than a contract because most of what transpires of value is a voluntary, willful, loving, mutual support that seeks honesty and trust. That has to become the root of our community. That has to become the core of our democracy. It never was completely, but it's being destroyed today, particularly by social media, which is a violation of the concept of covenant. Yes, it is. People atomized into vicious packs attacking one another and attacking individuals is not what the peaceable kingdom is about. And there is no new light of love in that, but the dark old light of hate. As we reorganize ourselves as a society to struggle forward and try to keep building a more perfect union and thereby somehow reach closer to this peaceable kingdom vision, can we resurrect the sanctity and importance of voluntary associations where individuals who mutually gather together in trust and support see that as something they do amongst themselves. But we cannot translate that libertarian model of free association over our entire nation. We live within a difficult tension. That is what history is. And yes, we need a, a government. And yes, we need laws. And yes, we need to constrain the excesses of each one of us. But if we can voluntarily meet in these institutions and be honest and trustworthy with one another in that context, then we can continue to be a vital culture for the world, this United States of America. Churches are dying everywhere. They were the principal and first voluntary association in the new world. Something is filling that vacuum. It is not clear what yet. But we're in a period of great transition. So as we try to think forward in the, into the future, can we ask ourselves, how, we being, how are we being guided by that bright light from within? Are we being true to ourselves? Are we building a peaceable kingdom, one relationship at a time? If we are, and not violating each other's sanctity as human beings, each to the other, not insulting each other, not being cruel, then perhaps we can sit there with the lions and the tigers and the bears because they're our brothers and sisters too. And we can celebrate and light another candlelight for peace in our journey. In the spirit of that, I say thank you for spending time with me and with us because I do belong to a community that speaks through me sometimes with common voice. So thank you for your time and peace and best wishes in your journey to build up a peaceable world. Amen. So again, thank you for spending time with us. If you'd like to know more about First Church Rowley, you can go online at firstchurchrowley.org. Of course, we'd always like to hear from you. You can call us anytime at 978-948-3993. So peace and best wishes. Goodbye.